Well, you've seen this AIO in the VR4 build from Jonesbow, but I want to give you more insights about the AIO because this is their new lineup and it's uh, really quite interesting what it can do with 12900K. You might have seen everything in the VR4 video as already stated, but this is it. This is really cool. It comes in black and white version. So basically, Today we're going to talk about Jonesbow TW6360 Addressable RGB AIO. My name is Ari from PC Crazy. Let's go! So, okay, we had a bunch of AIOs on the channel to review from 240, 280, 360, even 420. Uh, and it was uh, quite interesting to see lately in the past year how they all perform on Intel Core i9-12900K. Because, as you might have noticed, uh, the processor goes really high with the temperatures and it's kind of, uh, I would say, and they call it uh, a new normal temperature, I would say. But, yeah, it doesn't matter. We're going to talk about this one and it comes in two varieties so you have the black version and the white version addressable rgb on the fans and addressable rgb on the pump block top which really does look cool now uh, some uh, short specifications because i really want to get with those so radiator material is aluminium and the dimensions are 394 times 120 times 27 millimeters so with the fans, the total thickness is 52 millimeters. The fan dimensions are 120, 120 times 25, as already stated. And the fan speed goes from 800 to 1800 RPMs. Uh, the fan airflow is from 30.5 to 71 CFM. And the mean time before failure is equal or above 40,000 hours at uh, standard room temperature, 25 degrees Celsius. So the fan noise level is 35.7 decibels at maximum speed and we'll get to that part later on and I'm going to uh, get into details about that. Fan connector is of course 4 pin PWM and for the addressable RGB standard 5 volt 3 pin uh, header. Now the pump, the pump dimensions are uh, 80.3 times 71 times 57. The pump noise level is at maximum speed 30 decibels and the pump maximum speed is 2500 RPMs. These are some technical specifications that I wanted to share just so you could get a grasp about what are we going to talk about today. Some key features of the TW6360 addressable RGB AIO is it has a cooler pipe uh, which is designed to use 12 pipes to improve the heat dissipation built-in ultra quiet and high efficient water block which is also minimized tube connection helps coolant rotate faster and stable easy installation and maintenance that's for sure i mean not about the maintenance because uh, it really does need to uh, take some time to actually do something about it but the installation is really straightforward uh, when we're talking about the lj1700 no need to replace the coolant, of course, I mean, that's quite uh, logical. Super thin design when we're talking about water block and the pump. Uh, pure copper water block and inner microfin applied for a quick heat transfer. And we have wear resistant flame redundant and anti-leakage water pipe using EPDM plus IIR material. Uh, it is compatible with AMD and Intel sockets. Just in terms when we take into consideration uh, the clearance for the RAM. So if you're, for instance, running uh, four memory sticks, you don't have to worry about pipes hitting the memories or pushing them a bit. It will all fit perfectly without a single problem. Now here we have a stripped down Jonesbow VR4. As you can see, usually you know how it uh, comes and how it looks when it's all finished. But uh, I wanted to show you how the actual AIO looks uh, when it's placed inside the build. So 360 radiator on front, three uh, fans that are addressable RGB also placed on front. 
you have quite long tubes I would say and the cool thing is you can adjust them uh, by moving them depending on the case, uh, depending on the position of the radiator, depending on the rotation of the pump, even though I would suggest placing the pump as it is because you have a logo inside and to be honest, I think you could rotate it. I think you could rotate it, but you do have to remove the plexi cover on top of the pump and then rotate the logo. So basically there is an option. There is a possibility to adjust it so the tubes can go on top and bottom and everything. The only thing that is important that the block and the pump that need to be below the highest point of the AAO. That's all you need to know. So the rotation of the uh, pipes is totally irrelevant. Just the pump needs to be lower than the highest point. That's it. But let's talk about this. So how are you going to place the AIO inside your build? First of all, you do need to have or you do need to use uh, the backplate that comes in the accessory box for the LGA 1700. You have everything in the manual described how and where to connect each standoff on the backplate. So you have the LGA 1200, LGA 1700, uh, LGA 11.5X, for the 2011, 2066, you basically have all the threads already on the motherboard. So there's that. But you place the standoff according to the manual on the back plate. You place some sort of a plastic peg, which is quite shorter one, like maybe one and a half millimeter on that standoff. So it holds it to the back plate. Then you push the back plate on the motherboard. And basically on the other side, you put those long plastic standoffs on which you will eventually attach the pump top. Now, uh, when we're talking about the block and the pump top, you do have to use four screws and two plates that need to be mounted on the pump block top. Because this is how you're going to mount the AIO on your processor using the, uh, well, I would say springs and thumb screws uh, that can be additionally tied up with the screwdriver. And that's basically it. Of course, don't forget to remove the plastic foil and don't forget to place the thermal paste according to the processor. So depending what kind of processor you're using. So it looks really cool. I have to admit, it really does look quite nice, especially with the Jonesbo logo in the middle, which is also adjustable as already stated. You have white cables coming out from the fans and from the pump block top, uh, white tubes, I mean, I'm talking about the white version, of course, you have the black version, which has the opposite, of course. Everything is nicely synchronized when we're talking about the color scheme and adjusting the addressable RGB lights can be done by connecting the addressable RGB header directly to your motherboard and using motherboard software. So you heard the terminals in VR4, but I'm going to repeat them once again. So in idle, I don't have to talk about idle temperatures. In a, the 64 Extreme Edition on uh, full load, uh, the CPU went up to, I think it was uh, 66 or something. I really uh, don't remember that uh, temperature, the lower one, because it's mostly irrelevant. Uh, when we're talking about uh, proper thermal tests, I take CPU, FPU, cache memory, uh, cache uh, and system memory. The temperature went up to uh, 77 degrees Celsius, but here's the catch. So. Immediately, I didn't uh, adjust, I didn't tweak the fan curves according to the CPU temperature. I left it as it was on the motherboard and immediately when the process reached higher temperatures, the fan RPMs went up to maximum 100% and the pump went up to 100%. Now, the noise as it states on the box and uh, basically it's true, it really does go up to, what was it, uh, 35.7 decibels, which is honestly unbearable but here's the catch so you have 77 degrees celsius which is basically unbelievable for 12900k we have to admit that some average that i got is from 86 to 88 degrees celsius on all other 360 420 aios but if you place the speeds from 50 to 75 you lower the decibels from how uh, this is my pure guess around 30 decibels maybe even lower when you're at 50 you will get thermals at 86 degrees celsius which is still uh, average 
when we take into consideration even even I would say below average I would say average is 88 degrees Celsius that I got so 86 is quite outstanding and it really does place in a certain position where we're comparing it to other AIOs so basically what we got here is a great AIO that can cool down 12900k if you're really into that that you don't like seeing high temperatures you can always pump the speeds up to 100% but then as a minus you'll get as a con you'll get high decibel noise that's it but if you lower the rpms uh, to standard 50 75 you do need to play around you do need to tweak it in bios and to adjust the rpms to get perfect temperatures so it would be most likely a couple of entrants in BIOS to adjust the perfect RPMs with the perfect temperature and with the perfect decibel noise and making this system work perfectly. So yeah, I would say it's quite cool. I do have to mention that the Jonesbow VR4 is a full ventilated case that has perforated steel on all three sides, so three-sided mesh panels, which are basically really easy to remove, but you've already seen that. I won't go into that part. But it's quite easy to basically acknowledge the situation that this AIO performs much better than the other cases just because it's um, more open chassis. It's not open air chassis, but it does really have all sides uh, almost open. So that's really cool. That's why the TW6 360 performs much, much better than the other AIOs that I tested, but still, I don't think it will be underperformed compared to other AIOs if I placed it in some other case that has f only front meshed. You do use fans for outtake at the rear, at the top on the other cases. So there's that. That would, uh, I think, someone uh, even up uh, the whole temperature going up to 88, maybe, maybe touching 89. But that's just my pure guess. So guys, today was uh, actually quite interesting to see a different AIO competing with others in the range of 360, maybe even 280 uh, and 420. Uh, from Jones Bowl, the TW6 360 addressable RGB. If you liked it, if you really think it's something that you would like to see in your build, you can always check out the link in the description below for more details and eventually the price, of course, if you decide to buy it. And finally, all in all, if you're really satisfied with the video and you really enjoyed it, uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. Thank you for watching today's one. Hopefully, I will see you in another one, of course. Thanks. Bye-bye.